Thanks very much. All right, so yes, um, I'm going to be talking about the paper that came out in June of this year and kind of go through some of the motivations behind it. So um, Dr. Bosniak passed away in September 2016. We still miss him greatly. Here he is with his daughter. Um, so here he is looking at his, with his daughter at some, the view boxes. Um, yes, and for the millennials, this is a light box that we used to put films in front of to look at images. Um, anyway, this was the uh, state of the art paper and he actually did it as a welcome editorial based on his observations at that time. Um, and so, I guess I just click. This came out in June, and I think uh, Stu and Matt Davenport kind of thought it together. It came out of the uh, DFP at SAR, thinking about ways to um, really keep it still relevant and make sure that people still use it um, because of so many of the valid points that he made um, and in his observations. So I'm calling it the version 1993 because that was when he modified it to first describe the 2F classification system. And it was interesting because he and I shared an office for many years and he told me how many urologists got mad at the 2F edition and refused to even ever acknowledge it. So it's kind of funny how, um, you know, a lot of the criticisms we're getting for this new version remind me of that. But one of the big complaints about it and that we've always noticed is that there's a lot of um, disagreement between people on what, uh, where to put these cysts. Uh, between 2F and 3, or even between a 2 and a 3, people sometimes get stuck. And so we're trying to fix that. Um, Histopathology was the endpoint, and it wasn't survival. And now, uh, as with the new AUA guidelines, they're watching two centimeter solid renal mass lesions. So we're widening our scope of what we're willing to watch. And so it's kind of like, are we going to start looking at survival as outcomes? And then finally, people who've been doing this a long time tend to blow off a lot of renal lesions, and the Bosniak categorization never kind of helped give you any kind of justification for doing so. And this was trying to do that. So um, what are the main changes? MRI was officially incorporated. I know that um, Bosniak and Israel wrote a paper saying that they were both equivalent, but it was never put into the official categorization. It also defined a specific lexicon and then included a lot more benign Bosniak twos. So here was the version 1993, and for people who have said that the current version is bulky, this is one of the tables Dr. Bosniak approved in our paper, and it's pretty bulky. So it, and it, part of the problem with it is you have words like hairline thin, um, and then you can say things that are water density but not give a definition as to what that water density is. And then you get into fine calcification or short, and not everyone knows what that means. Are you put perceived in quotation marks? And someone's perceived versus someone else's perceived are going to be very different. Plus, as our CT scanners are getting stronger, um, you're seeing enhancement in everything. Um, and as MR is getting stronger, you're always seeing enhancement. You don't know what a blow off or not. And so the problem is, is that you are getting a lot of variability between people and there wasn't a lot of agreement. So for example, this paper came out um, by a bunch of urologists and radiologists. And if you look at this one here, you can see there's pencil thin, right? Pencil thin, almost no enhancement. And you would clearly not be concerned about this one. It looks like a Bosniak II. And this one has a solid nodule of enhancement that's clearly a Bosniak IV. But in this paper, they called them both Bosniak III. And this just came out and is in the urology paper. So if this is something that people, urologists and radiologists, are getting confused with, clearly we're not making the point go across. All right, so, um, so this is it, and it's divided in the columns, and I know it looks bulky. This is the CT column, this is the MRI column. And what it goes through is just kind of trying to give more definition. You can see here it's expanded what we're allowed to ignore, and it kind of incorporates a lot of the recent literature saying that, um, like the paper, the Jonish paper, saying if it's hyper attenuating greater than 70, or at MR when it's super bright, things that you can blow 
put into a benign category. And it defines a thickness. And actually, I told Matt when he called me and told me he was doing this, I told him when I've had readers, fellows, do reading for me on for projects for Bosniak 2F, I gave them three millimeters because otherwise our inner observer agreement was terrible. And so I had been giving them numbers to use, and it was working. And I know, you know, a lot of my mentors told me a radiologist with a ruler is a dangerous thing. But when we teach med students small bowel obstruction, we still use three centimeters because they have no retinal or cortical miles to base things on. And you, you need to have a starting point. And so this goal is to get people on the same page. And again, like this is one of the cartoons in the paper kind of going through what is linear, what is curvy linear, how many is too many. This is kind of going through the thickness and using three millimeters is the thickness that actually bumps something up to a 2F. And then this goes into irregularity versus a nodule. And, you know, it's still going to tease, they're both Bosniak, you know, these are both traditionally surgical lesions. So it's going to be interesting to see how these features end up playing out um, in the future. So we don't have perceived anymore. It's just, is there enhancement or not? And so you have to kind of make that decision for it. Um, and what are the major changes on CT? So I'm just going to quickly go through the major changes that were not in the prior Bosnian category. So category two, benign, here it is, homogeneously hyperattenuating greater than 70. You can just ignore it on non-con. Here's another category two, which is cyst appearing, and it's defining it, negative nine to 20, homogeneous, thin. Most of us would have called this a cyst anyway. It's just putting it into the category. Here's another Bosniak two. If you measure it, it's gonna come out to 30 Hounsfield units, probably a component of beam hardening that was discussed before that clearly looks just like the gallbladder. It doesn't look like it's enhancing at all. So we can now ignore that, and that comes out of the papers that have recently been done by Corwin and others saying that this is benign, meaning you don't have to recommend an expensive $3,000 MR to look at these renal lesions. Here's another one, too small to characterize. This is one from our institution. We read from outside sites, and this one actually ended up getting a um, MRI and then a second MR for this silly thing when the person, all they had was originally some gallstones. So it was kind of silly. And so you can just call it benign. And here's the other one. What do you do with that guy? It looks benign. Just call it benign. And this is allowing that to happen. Calcification of any type, that is now just considered category two. So all of these categories, bulky, thin, etc. You can just call it a two, but there is a caveat, like for this case where you say, okay, could that be hiding some nodular enhancement behind it? And I'll tell you, this was followed. It was put as a 2F because the wall was a little thickened, and this never grew over 10 years. So I have 10 years of this case. Um, but bulky calcification like this, you can't see what's in it. So the caveat says in case like this, go ahead and get an MR, and you can see there is nodular enhancement. This was a cystic RCC. I almost wonder for these mass lesions that burn out and calcify like this, if we're going to be correlating these with survival, I've never seen one of these metastasize. It's not like the seminomas that calcify and then met. I've never seen renal lesions that calcify ever do anything. So I wonder what we're going to end up doing with that long term. So then for CT, this is what we've done. We've expanded and given more definition. What are the major changes on MRI? We actually incorporated MR into the official Bosniak classification system. So here, if you've got a homogeneous mass that's markedly hyperintense on non-con T1, and it's homogeneous, and it's like two and a half times the normal parenchyma, I don't really know how you figure that out, but if you can do that math in your head by the calculation, it just looks very bright and you can ignore it. Um, here's one though, and I showed this case. Um, this was a guy who formed papillary RCCs. You see how it's heterogeneous? So even though, and it's, this is a pre-contrast T1, it's very heterogeneous. And if you go to subs, it's hard to know if it's enhancing. We called this noise, but the guy formed papillary RCCs. So I know in like um, the Smith et al. paper, they looked at these. And in men who form cancers, you're likely going to keep forming cancers. So we were following it and believe it, and of course, it ended up being resected, and this was a papillary RCC. So these ones that are heterogeneous, even if you don't see enhancement, we put it as a 2F. 
for this reason. And so this is a pitfall, and I want to say this because I feel like, and Dr. Bozniak used to always say, T2-weighted imaging on MR was like the ultrasound of the, the modality, meaning you see a whole lot of stuff that looks super ugly, and you don't know what to do with it. So whenever you look at a T2-weighted image, you would call this a four. But the key thing that he always told me, and he would get very mad about this when people would forget it, was you can't just have morphology. You need to have morphology plus um, some type of functional perfusional measurement. So that morphology needs to be showing vascular recruitment. And if here you can see all those septa, et cetera, are not enhancing. So what Bosnia category? The only thing you really have here is this three millimeter smooth wall. And so this would be a Bosniak 2F. So you have to ignore anything ugly you see on haste. And it's the enhancement that's key. This was followed over several years and it eventually just shrunk down into nothing. Could it be a burned out papillary? Who knows, but if you look at survival, nothing happened. Um, so what are the unmet knowledge gaps? What is the role of ultrasound? It's still, we know that we incorporate it into the one. If you can show a clear anechoic cyst, well-defined back wall, increased posterior through transmission, you know that it's benign. But people don't know what to do with the contrast enhanced ultrasound because that's even stronger and you're seeing enhancement that may not make a difference and it tends to upgrade lesions that may not have a survival role. Non-structural information, what about perfusion, diffusion, et cetera, it's still not known. What are each individual feature? Like if you see irregularity, is that predictive of certain outcomes? What about cystic change versus necrosis? This is still a struggle. You don't want to call a necrotic solid mass a cystic lesion. Those can be aggressive, and those do not do well with surveillance. And then mass size growth rate, and then we know that it, it predicted cancer likelihood, but again, not survival. And so we know the biggest complaint that I've heard is that it's cumbersome. The other one was one, two, three, or you know, some urologists still only think it's four categories, but it was five categories and it seemed great, but a lot of experienced urologists disagree. And they were, there's still not a lot of inter-observer agreement. And then the worst thing that's happened is that over the years, and I see it in a lot of community um, radiologists, they won't use it and they call everything a complex cyst. And that's the worst. You don't want to move away from it because people don't agree. And you don't want every person to have their own intuitive definition for what is thin, thick, or many. Um, and so in summary, I would say Dr. Bosniak, his criteria was transforming. And his concept of observing renal masses was way ahead of his time back when he started doing it in the late 80s. And um, he always felt terrible when a Bosniak 3 would come back as a cancer because he really believed in avoiding operation at all costs if possible. And so he was a visionary. And we just want to expand this model to improve the usability, the reproducibility, inclusion, and to expand to MR. And then future uh, research, hopefully from this group, will come out to say, how are we doing? Are we doing well? And are we going to address these unmet needs? Thank you very much.